from Dublin to Cleveland production. Hello and welcome to From Dublin to Cleveland. I'm Logan Howard and I'm joined by Brendan, but it looks like he's still in the basement. <laughs> Why are you the most holy I've ever seen you? <laughs> For those of you listening on the podcast version, he does not mean righteous. He means my clothes are covered in holes, which they are. You can see a bit too much of my skin, possibly even a nipple or two. <laughs> it's because that darn basement I got locked in in the last video. It's still there, friends. And there's a, a creepy, jaundice-looking fellow called Bartholomew who's just been, like, you know, tearing my clothes to shreds. Help! <laughs> Someone call 999. <laughs> oh, that's why I haven't been able to do it. I've been calling 911 because 911 is worse. So. None of this country, bud. Come on. Cop yourself on. Not everything is about America. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. So before we get too far into our episode, I'm going to turn it over to Brendan from the basement with our ad today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm absolutely bricking it. I mean, find out two minutes ago I was given this. <laughs> okay, I read it as naturally as possible. <laughs> hey there, fellas. <laughs> Give me a moment or two, okay? I'll get used to this. Hey <laughs> Okay, take three. Hey there, <laughs> Forgive me, I take this very seriously. We're in a money-making business here. <laughs> take four. Hey there. <laughs> <laughs> it's so artificial. This is not how I speak in general. Take five. <laughs> oh my goodness. Whew. I can do this. Yes, you can. Take six. <laughs> Let's just leave all these in. <laughs> okay. 15 minute video of just me trying to get through the introduction. <laughs> this is why Logan always does this. <laughs> now you quit, at, you quit laughing, otherwise I'm going to laugh a seventh time. Hey there, fellow puzzle enthusiasts. You know what's worse than stepping on a Lego? Crappy cardboard jigsaw puzzles. Can you see this one, yeah? 1,000 pieces. I picked this up in June. It's April. Still haven't done it. That's why I'm excited to tell you about Wongo Puzzles. Not Bongo, that's a dog's name. Wongo. W-O-N-G-O. These things are the real deal, folks. Each puzzle is a masterpiece, cut out of real wood, with stunning designs and unique shapes. They'll challenge and delight you. And they come with all the pieces, guaranteed. I should hope so, otherwise it would be a very puzzling puzzle. <laughs> they are 100% wooden puzzles, so they last forever. None of this falling apart nonsense if you try sticking them in the wrong place. Each piece is hand-drawn, so no two pieces are the same. And you'll discover some fun, whimsy pieces as you work through the puzzles. They come in a custom wooden box, which is perfect for storage, and they also make for a great gift too. With stunning designs and unique shapes, Wongo puzzles are a cut above the rest. Some of my personal favourites include the mandala design, the snow globe design, which makes for a beautiful centrepiece on a table, by the way. Do I also have a cheeky penchant? For the elephant, the turtle, and no list will be complete without that salamander. Look at that tail. So what are you waiting for? Go to longwoodpuzzles.com and pick your puzzle today. And be sure to use the promo code from Dublin to Cleveland to get 10% off your order. And hello, look at the recession that's looming. Or... <laughs> It may as well be already here. An economic downturn. Who does not love a deal at times like this? This is the most fun you've had with a puzzle. Guaranteed. Or our generous friends at Wongo's will give you your money back. So go to wongopuzzled.com 
com, and don't forget to use the promo code from Dublin to Cleveland to get 10% off your order and get puzzling right now. So use our special link from Dublin to Cleveland to save 10% at wongopuzzles.com. The discount will be applied at the checkout. Go get it. Send us an email. Tell us which one you got. Send us photographs. We're so excited to see all the fun you have. When you help our sponsor, you help us directly. Wongos.com. Get puzzling. All right, Broski, over to you. It was like he was born to do that. He just... <laughs> I mean, 77 times number perfection. He needed six tries to prepare him. <laughs> and then... Uh. Yeah. <laughs> I knew he had it in him, folks. I knew he had it in him. It's, uh, <laughs> we'll, leave, we'll leave that first bit in just so you guys get some... <laughs> I'd like to thank my guard, my family, my best friend Logan. I couldn't do it with him. <laughs> Everyone who supported me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, what we're doing for the podcast today, you may have seen it in the title, but I am, and you may have guessed it from the uh, description, but I am going to tell you guys a story. Uh, so, I have written a story. I wrote it when I was 11 years old, um, and I was very little. We had this thing that was like uh, authors, um, like young, young authors club or whatever, and so we wrote stories, and we tried to compete of who was getting uh, number one prize. This... I thought was a, an award-winning uh, story, but apparently it was just a uh, a nice, good job story. So who knows whether this is actually good. Brendan's going to let us know at the end. Um, I'm going to read it for you. This is a story I wrote. This is a fictional story about my hometown of Grafton, Ohio. So I will get into it, and uh, we'll, hopefully you guys will enjoy it, and it will be a good time. So uh, you might this might be your bedtime story. I don't know. That might work. <laughs> If you fall asleep, maybe that's the point. Um, <laughs> I better not fall asleep on a high chair over here, a big stool. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, so I grew up in a small town of Grafton, Ohio. Grafton is located 20 miles west of Cleveland. It was founded in 1817 by Mark Grafton. One hot summer morning when I was 12, my sister tried to slice her finger off with a pair of scissors. It had been a particularly boring week, and I think she thought that we needed some excitement. My mom asked our neighbor, Mr. Newman, to watch me while she took my sister to the emergency room. Mr. Newman was a retired school teacher who had spent all of his life in Grafton, and I really enjoyed Mr. Newman because he told interesting stories about his life, his travels, and the people he had met. While we drank lemonade on his front porch, he shared with me about how Grafton came to be. Um, Mark Grafton was born on August 4th, 1800, near Boston, Massachusetts. He was the third boy out of 12 children. He had three brothers and eight sisters. His father raised beef cattle on a small farm, and he was a hard worker who made his children work hard, too. Uh, Mark's mother was sweet, as all mothers are, and made the home a wonderful place to grow up. The children went to a one-room schoolhouse down the road, and it was there that Mark learned to read, which became a passion for him. And that's the reason we have a library in our town now. Mark read all the time and was often lost in his books. When Mark was 12, his village was attacked by a wandering band of Cherokee Indians. They weren't really a mean group. They just wanted some excitement. Mark was out in a field of cows behind his house reading a book. The other children saw the Indians and ran into the house for safety. Mark didn't hear anything until one of the Indians clamped a hand on his arm. Mark was led away. He did think about trying to run, but decided that it might be fun to be an Indian for a while. He ended up spending three years with the Indians, with whom he became great friends. This is one reason when Mark started a baseball team in Cleveland that he named them the Indians. Mark learned to pay attention to what he was going on around him, and he became a part of the tribe. He helped in the fields and learned about natural fertilizers and other growing methods. On one adventure, he saved the chief from drowning. Chief Running Bear wanted to thank Mark by making him a blood brother. Instead, Mark asked if he would be allowed to travel west to Montana. Chief Running Bear gave Mark a beautiful white horse named Willow and set out. Willow Park was named after his horse. Many people were traveling west back then to start a new life and seek their fame and fortune. This appear, appealed to Mark, but not very much. As Mark was passing through Ohio, he stopped for just a few days at his cousin Eli's house. Eli had bought land and started a city call, nearby called Illyria. Eli convinced uh, him that 
Ohio was just as good as Montana, and Mark bought land south of Illyria to begin his own town, Grafton. He figured that stringing or starting a town had been easier than starting a city or traveling to Montana. Since land back then only cost $1 an acre, he bought as much as his $80 would buy. First, he put in roads. Uh, 57 Chinese immigrant workers helped Mark lay the road in four days in the fall. This is why Main Street in Grafton is also called Route 57. Mark built a big white house and decided to raise pigs. He thought pigs would be easier than cows and they would still provide meat. After a month, he thought different. Those pigs could be smelled all the way to Illyria and back and cousin Eli's house again, back and back again. Uh, Mark decided that it was time to find a wife. He wrote a letter to his mother and asked her to find him a suitable wife for him. He waited five months to get a reply. His mother had found a lovely girl whose name was Nancy. Nancy Stanford wanted a new adventure. She was a fantastic cook and she liked to sew. She was also available, which as we know, <laughs> is a rare commodity. <laughs> Nancy and Mark's parents came out to Grafton in the spring of 1821. Mark and Nancy fell in love at first sight, which turned out to be a good thing. They were married a week later in a beautiful outdoor wedding. The following week, Nancy convinced Mark that the pigs would have to go. Together, they worked on finding a new product to raise on their farm. Mark didn't really invent tomatoes, but back then, tomatoes were considered weeds. No one ate them like we do today. They grew along the side of the roads. Kids would throw them at each other, and they made wonderful squishing noises when they made a hit. Tomato fights were common during most of the summers here in Ohio. One day, Nancy went to the garden to pick up some vegetables, some tomatoes, were growing next to the lettuce. She thought her salad would look prettier with some red tomatoes added to the green lettuce, green peppers, and green celery. She picked several bright red juicy tomatoes and chopped them up and added them to her salad. They were pleasantly surprised that the wild tomatoes had a wonderful flavor. Later that evening, as they sat on the front porch to swing, Mark came up with the idea of starting a new business, growing tomatoes. The problem was that no one knew what to do with the tomatoes since they were weeds. Nancy started the next morning working on some new recipes that included tomatoes. She wrote a cookbook, invented meatloaf, pizza, tomato sauce on ketchup, tomato juice, uh, original ketchup, and tomato paste. Mark began going around town digging up tomato plants. He hired boys to put them in rows in the field behind his house. Over the next two weeks, he collected enough plants to fill 10 acres. The tomatoes that grew very well, especially along the river that went through his property. Mark named it the Black River after his faithful dog, Sparkle. Sparkle was a black Labrador retriever. It wasn't long before Nancy had more tomatoes than she could use in a single day. Since neighbors were asking to buy her tomatoes in the cookbooks that she had written, she opened up a roadside stand. The stand was busy from sunup to sundown. Sparkle the dog would greet the customers. Nancy's roadside stand turned into the Sparkle Market where we get our groceries today. People would drive into Grafton just for the tomatoes. It wasn't long, but long before the news of tomatoes spread and Grafton became known as the tomato capital. The population in Grafton had been growing. One newcomer was Ivan Spitzer, a childhood friend of Mark who moved to Grafton to start a horse and buggy shop. He invented the Spitzer buggy, which was sold all across the United States. It had a heated front seat and cup holders. Today, Spitzer is known for selling cars. Another person to come to Grafton was Nancy's stepbrother, Joe McDonald. Joe opened a small restaurant and used some of Nancy's wonderful recipes. He invented Ohio fries, which later came to be known as French fries in 1925. His daughter, Christine, would eat her fries with Aunt, with Aunt Nancy's ketchup, and it turned to be a good combination that we still use today. Just last week, my family and I ate at the McDonald's at Grafton. I even had some of those famous hamburgers and fries. Transportation to the east was slow to take tomatoes to the city of Cleveland, New York, and Boston. Mark asked the, the 57 Chinese immigrant workers who happened to be finishing a job in New London to help him build the railroad tracks to connect Grafton to the main tracks in Illyria. Now the tomatoes could be shipped before they went bad. It also provided the Graftons with income. It wasn't long before the Graftons were very wealthy. When they got old, they sold their farm and retired in Orlando, Florida. They are buried in the Nesbitt Cemetery that is east of town. The Nesbits were a family that took a covered wagon to Oregon. Once they got there, they decided that they didn't like it, so they returned to Ohio. There is a covered wagon in their front yard today. The new tomato, still to this day, uh, the new tomato farmers didn't take 
good care of the farm. Soon people planted their own tomato plants in their own gardens. Mark and Nancy had three children. Their oldest boy, Hunter, was named Plug. When he grew up, he joined the army and became a general. After returning to Grafton, he began the General Plug and Manufacturing Company. He was soon friends, uh, soon made good friends out of Thomas Edison from Milan, Ohio. Thomas needed plugs for his electrical light bulbs. The middle child was a girl, Carolyn, who was a better cook than her mother. She was given a restaurant as a wedding gift, and today that restaurant is still called Nancy's Diner. She named it after her mother. She married a handsome man by the name of Mike Middleton. He started a croquet and badminton club. Today, it's called the Royal Court Racket Fitness Center. Mike and Carolyn built a house on Durkee Road that they called the Middleton View. Later, it was shortened to Midview. Now, that name is used for their schools here in Grafton. Their third child, Mark Jr., grew up to be an artist. He traveled in Europe for many years and painted beautiful medieval scenes. The Unicorn Restaurant is named for one of his famous paintings. I'm not sure that all of what Mr. Newman told me that day was true, but it sure does explain a lot of things that I see around town today. <laughs> I love how creative the inhabitants of Grafton were whenever they got bored. <laughs> Between, you know, slicing one's finger off or, you know, just like, you know, in, in invading uh, a people group <laughs> or deciding to run away with said people group and just join them or, you know, just taking an ocean to start a town or saying, Astralis, and I might as well get married now. <laughs> I think my favorite line <laughs> was about buying a white house and filling the whole yard of pigs. And just before I could say, that was a bad idea, you were like, that was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's very, very informative for an 11 year old. Yes. <laughs> Whether or not most of that was true or false, could, I could care less. But, <laughs> but in terms of like even origin story, um, or, or an origin myth even uh, of your of your time that's that's brilliant actually it's so so detailed it's more it's more fun than the actual story of grafton so i will okay. say <laughs> <laughs> how much an ratio was indicative of the truth um like none of it <laughs> <laughs> okay all of it was made up <laughs> I was thinking of that. I was like, really? No one in all of history had ever thought of putting tomatoes and lettuce together? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it was good. Had my little sting in the tail at the very end. Like, I'm pretty sure that guy is just like an old fat liar. <laughs> I did enjoy the lemonade, though. <laughs> lemonade. <laughs> it's like one detail was true. <laughs> I liked it. Very, very detailed. Very good for an eleven-year-old. Definitely. Yes, definitely. it's um, it's like a kid's view on why things are the way they are. You know how kids want to know, like why is something like this or why? Yeah, why yeah, yeah. It's very detailed in terms of giving you answers to why things are mm. that way, even though it's not true. It's completely a false story. It's still a, a good good little story. So, but the kind of thing that appeases a child because children do have an and then and then and then and then kind of mm. mentality yes. where they love story, they love the narrative, they love hearing this happen and this and this and this and this. And um, and yeah, you get a real sense of uh, of the oh well, this happened, and because that happened, well, this happened. Oh, and then he went there, and then they did this, and then he was went over there, and then she came into it because. Why not? Yeah, I, I, I liked it. I liked it. You could rework that, actually. And it would make for a very nice um, short story on the innocence of youth. Yes, yes. So there you have it. That is my story. I have three other stories to share. If you enjoyed that, leave us a comment below and say, uh, hey, that was a good that was a good episode. I like that story. Or, hey, that was dumb. That's not true. It's a bunch of false stuff. I thought this was a true podcast. I thought it was the truth. False <laughs> teasers. 
<laughs> Grafton's not even mentioned in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Those truthers, if you're a truther and you're coming after me, you have something better to do than if you're like. <laughs> Uh, but you can provided those it. tomatoes. It's not okay to throw them at people. <laughs> <laughs> but you know there are uh, starving in Africa. We'll take any kind of email. So you can send us an email at from <laughs> with the Cleveland at gmail.com. <laughs> tell us what you liked, tell us what you didn't like, tell us what you hated, tell us what you loved. Uh tell us whatever. We we want to hear it from you. So send us a message there. Uh you can also find us uh, on Facebook from at from Dublin to Cleveland. Um and of course, support Wongo Puzzles. We support them. Um, we love their puzzles. Puzzles are awesome. So support them and support us at the same time. Because as you support them, you're supporting us as well. Because we get a little bit of money back for every single one that you guys buy. So please go ahead, buy some. You're supporting Wongo Puzzles. You're supporting the From Dublin to Cleveland podcast. And you get some cool puzzles in between. So I can't see anything wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> Like, no, let's get back to the Bible story. <laughs> Indeed, let's get back to the Bible story. Well, I'm going to take it away. <laughs> yeah, I was aware sure where that, like, you know, second Wongo's promo came from. I thought I'd done a good enough job. Apparently not. <laughs> you did. You did. You did a great job. That was the official one. Oh, it I does have to be re emphasized, though. I was doing an unofficial re emphasis one. <laughs> I see. I see. All right, guys, please whip open your Bibles. And please turn to Deuteronomy. <laughs> I just thought you were, like, throwing yours over your shoulder. <laughs> it's like, there are people, when they get the Bible for the first time, like, fall on their knees and start kissing it. And Logan's like, ugh, right before. <laughs> but, Brendan, it's to be a sword, not a whip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, you can do both. If you hold it. When it's closed, it's like a sword, it's like a handle, but if you keep it open, it's kind of like a whip, because you've got the on the front cover, you know? It's got the nice little snap motion. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Or you can hold, like, you know, the first four books and try smacking them with this, but I don't know if it would get very far. <laughs> it's like I come at you with 62 books in the Bible. <laughs> Watch my swing motion. Oh, there's a bookmark. Now I forgot what sign I was on. Oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> all right. So in Deuteronomy, which you should all have opened by now, uh, is chapter 32, and we're looking at verses 45 to 47. So Moses has basically spoken to the Israelites about the entire history of the nation of Israel. Um, most of them weren't even alive for most of this, the concerned their ancestors. But he talks yeah. to them as though they had done it all personally themselves. He's like, you know, you, your, you, yours. And some of them are probably thinking, what the heck is this? Um, it's good seed. It's a very good reminder to the people of where they've come from as a nation, where they're going. But yeah. the Lord very somberly tells Moses... Even as you're speaking, they are turning away from you. Their hearts are turning from you, which is absolute nonsense. Totally, utterly bewildering. But we see it happen today as well. How many times have you shared the Bible with somebody, even like the gospel of grace and freedom and peace, and just seen someone's stonewall expression and it just doesn't even penetrate their heart? Yeah. So in verses 45 to 47, Moses implores them to get their act together. <laughs> when Moses finished reciting all these words to all Israel, he said to them, Take to heart all, I love how often the word all is used in that sentence, Take to heart all the words I've solemnly declared to this day, so that you may command your children to obey carefully all the words of the law. They are not just idle words for you. They are your life. By them, you will live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to possess. The word of God, friends, is not an add-on to our lives. 
It's not something we believe when it's convenient. It's not something that we proclaim when we have hearers or an audience. Yeah. It's not something that we turn to for no other reason than because we're going through a tough time. It is your life. It is the air you breathe. It is what gives you energy. It is what gives you sustenance. It is what heals you. It is what restores you. It is what teaches you. It is what everything else in your life is secondary to by a colossal, impassable margin. It tells you what your opinion is. So you watch the media, and it's all, oh, a man can become a woman, a woman can become a man, they can be neither, they can be both, they can change in the same day. Yeah, nonsense. The Bible says the Lord made male, he made female, he saw that it was good. Amen. Two, not three, not four, not ninety, two, different, but equal, and equally beautiful. The Lord says it's all about the cross and the resurrection. So when other people tell you, you can be a good person based on your own works, no. That is an idol of self. It bows the knee to the cross and the empty grave of Jesus. The Bible says, first and foremost, you love the Lord your God. Not your friends. Not your family, not your spouse, not your children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the word of God. If you are more concerned with how the people in your world, even the people under your roof, even the people you co-created, <laughs> care about you and see you and perceive you more than God's opinion, you need to fix your eyes on Jesus. You need to take a step back and realign your focus. Everything in your life, everything in the world, whether it likes or not, is peripheral to the Bible, is peripheral to the Word of God. And the blessings that come with it are long life and prosperity and fruitfulness. And that is what we want for each and every one of you. We don't just have these little Bible segments at the end of all of our videos for the crack, or because we think it sounds good, or we want to make something a bit holy or you know, Christianize <laughs> what was otherwise just, you know, two lads with laptops and phones talking to each other. Um, it's because we have seen the goodness of God in the land of the living, and we've seen the power of the word when it's put to work. And we know it's powerful. We know it's available as much for you as it has been for us. All right, Broski, watch that comes to your mind in that passage yeah um i think i think you nailed it on the head and moses does as well when he's just like <laughs> you know this is not a very futile thing mm. because a lot of the children of israel were very flippant about following god um you have them cross over the red sea and let's let's just sit let's just think about that for a minute okay crazy miracle god does something awesome where he delivers mm -hmm. them them in a, a unwinnable situation they cannot escape the only way they can escape is with god that's the only way they're getting out and he does he delivers for them he he delivers them from evil from re-enslavement in egypt they mm. cross over the red sea puts egypt to shame egypt gets wiped out they lose so many men so many people yeah. are gone in fact they've they lost their slaves they lost the, the slave stuff, they lost all these people that they went to give them back. Egypt is wrecked because of how what God did. And they're out in the wilderness, and God is leading them. And what happens? The story goes, three days later, they're going, where did you bring us out here to die because we don't have any food? And it's, it, it is indicative of the human heart what their situation is because they saw with their own eyes mm. God do some amazing things, stuff that mm. just doesn't make sense. Why would he, why would you walk across on dry land 
in the middle of water. I mean, there are people who claim that, oh, the water wasn't really that high or <laughs> wasn't that big of a deal. No, God did some awesome things of getting them yeah. across dry land. They didn't walk on like, yeah. it wasn't like spongy. It wasn't like mm -hmm. you know, anything like that. Some crazy right. stuff that shouldn't happen. He, he saves them from. And you would think, you even think in your own life, God's done some awesome things in your life. And you'd think, you know, I think he's pretty trustable. I think I can trust him with whether I'm going to eat or not. But no, they, they, they couldn't. And that's, that's our heart as well. That's why we, he's, right. that's why God has given us his word. We're supposed to be in it every day. It's supposed to be our life because our, our hearts are so prone to wander. They're prone to walk away from God. They're prone to run from him. They're prone to go to addiction, to um, other sins, to stuff in our lives that is good, but isn't God. And it's prone to rely on those things, to trust in those things, to hope in those things, to say, man, my life will be good if I had dot, 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 dot. My life will be great if I had dot, 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 dot. You have the one thing that you need to live. And that is God's word. And that is God himself. You need it. You have to have it. He's the only one that allows us to continue to live on this earth. That allows us to come to know him, to give, to, to be, to live in countries that have this word um, to him, have completed this word over thousands of years. Um, and he's done that for us. And so he's done all these things. But yet there's so many times in each and every one of our hearts where we still doubt, you know, I don't think God's actually going to give me what I want, or I'm not going to actually get this, or I, it's not going to work out this way. Or, you know, I don't, I'm not sure God really loves me, or I'm not sure God really is going to do all those good things for me. He does. He does all those things. And each and every one of us, I, I'm susceptible to this. I'm sure Brendan is susceptible to this. We're so easily no. we get confused by... <laughs> <laughs> joke, joke. <laughs> we can our hearts can can wander and not be where they're supposed to be so that's why we're in god's mm -hmm. word that's why we have to be in god's word that's why every morning when you wake up you need to open god's word start the day off right you need to talk to him throughout your day uh you need to spend time with mm -hmm. his his believers who can encourage you and can strengthen you um as uh as detrimental as fellow believers can be sometimes they can be <laughs> the most encouraging things as well. They can give you a timely word when you need it. Yeah. Uh, even though they can cut us deeply, they can encourage us more than anything mm -hmm. else could. Um, so God has given us people. He's given us his word. He's given us himself. This is our God. Our God is powerful, loving, kind, caring, just, holy, um, omniscient, all knowing, um, He's greater than anything we can fathom, but yet makes himself known to each and every one of us that we can have a personal relationship with him. He is all these awesome things and so much more. Um, and so this is what we were made for. This is what we were created for, to be with him forever, to enjoy him forever. And so enjoy him today. Enjoy him tomorrow. Enjoy him the next day. Enjoy him every single day because he's worth it. And he will take care of whatever needs you have. It might not be in your time frame. Trust me, I'm going through that right now. I know that, that there's things that I need or things that need to happen. And I'm going, oh, well, right now would be good. Well, now would be good. Well, now would be good. But he's got it all in his hands. He knows what he's doing. He'll take it in his time. And we can trust him with that. So remind each other today in loving ways. Some people can be unloving in reminding people about this. But be loving. Yeah. <laughs> people and uh trust that god knows and is doing what's best for you especially if you know christ as your savior so um with that uh brendan anything else you want to add or finish with i'll just pray this side of this meeting god i thank you lord for everyone who's listened today oh god under the sound of our voices lord and i pray that you would put a deep passionate zealous love in their hearts for your word that as they read it there would not be idle words and they would see that they're not idle words but that those words will speak right into their lives and right into the lives of other people in their worlds as they're reading it may they see 
oh my goodness, so-and-so went through a struggle thousands of years ago. I'm going through that struggle. Oh my goodness, the nation of Israel went through this. My nation is going through this. Because, Lord, you say in Ecclesiastes that there's nothing new under the sun. You make history repeat itself, and you call the past to account. We can look at how you rescued people in the past and see how you're going to rescue us in the future and how you're going to use us to deliver other people too. Jesus, everyone listening to this was born for such a time as this and has heard this word and season for such a time as this. So break the yoke of unbelief off them, God. Heal them of any unbelief or any apathy towards your words and may they live long and prosper in the land that you have called them into. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. And no, I do not apologize for that Star Trek reference. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way. <laughs> I accept your apology for that one. I've totally given up the Mandalorian. After that Gina Carano incident, I was like, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> all right, yeah. friends. You'll see us all next week. Hopefully, Brandon will be out of his basement and uh, <laughs> we'll Maybe. We'll leave him alone. <laughs> we will see. We will see. A prayer for him this week. <laughs> He's showing a bit less skin. <laughs> all right. We'll see you all next week. Have a lovely week. Uh -huh. Bye.